Hello to you on this very fine day. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We are going to start today's episode by completing a very old quest. The animals. All of them. Oh, I don't have leggings anymore. Okay, so if we hold everything in our inventory, is the quest done? Oh, we need 20 more chickens. I think we should have some in the kitchen. No, all of them were cooked. But that is perfectly fine. There are chickens everywhere. Only three more. You, my dearest friend. You're the final one. Thank you, thank you. We are going to take the unstable induced mattock. The reason that we had to kill all the animals apart from getting the mattock is that I have to remove the pit. I want to start working on a mob farm and this guy was in the way. But first things first, since we have a chicken trophy, let us get some flight. It has like 8 uses left and I think you can repair it too. Nice, <laughs> we have flight. And this was a really good timing because I need to make a small tower. This is going to be the site of our new mob farm. It's going to be a 7x9, I guess. Because I think the range on the vacuum hopper from open blocks is a 7x7, so we can't go with a 9x9. Unless we use two. Oh, a vacuum chest requires ender collector. <laughs> and I don't want to know. Anyways, the reason that this is chunky is that we also want to be able to hide the cabling. And how far are you going to push me? That is good. We can have the spikes here. Oh, flight ran out. That can happen. Making a mob farm is not as easy and as cheap as you would think, it's actually incredibly expensive, but I think it's going to be worth it. The first item that we're going to need is the diamond spike, and obviously we're going to have seven of them. A vacuum hopper, vroom, <laughs> that's funny. A trash can, after a crazy amount of crafting, I'm hoping we can have a drawer controller. Yes, we can. Thank you. And that is a quest. A decent supply of item conduits. Some fluid conduits, for some very weird reason, a very expensive redstone conduit, and some fans. The only thing remaining is that I have to make some speed upgrades. That's it. As I have already mentioned, we are going to have a 7x7 platform. Later on, I'm going to switch it with cursed earth. Don't you worry. Actually, we really don't have that many blocks of cursed earth, so maybe we use dirt? If it is dark, it's gonna spread, so don't you worry. We're going to have our 7 fans. We got one as a reward, which was good. They are a bit expensive. We're also going to have a light source, somewhere over here so that we can switch the farm on and off. Flying is nice, but slow. One thing that I'm not sure of is that our creeper is going to explode in the mob farm, because some of the mobs are crazy. The spikes are going to go over here, like so. Yeah, even if you're on it, you will take damage, and a lot of damage. One more thing that I kind of forgot is the vacuum hopper. I think we're done, we just have to cover it. I think the fans are going to let through light, but that's not a huge problem because I'm going to put blocks of redstone. Also, as usual, we want it to be tree tall, so that we get endermen. Voila, fully complete. I go get the redstone. Here is the redstone, the fans should be active. Yeah, they are active, they're pushing me. We want it to eject to the bottom, so this should be acceptable. And it's also going to be for fluids. Because, you know, we are also going to get experience. We can't make the obelisk yet, but this will work. I have no idea why it's pushing me. Okay, so putting the redstone was a stupid mistake. I can't work. It keeps pushing me, I have no idea why. Also, we want the conduit to connect, yep, to the lamp. And I guess we just bundle them together, like so. Good, I think we're operational. So for the moment, we just remove one dirt, put one cursed earth, take it with our wand, and switch. Are we getting mobs? Yes, nobody exploded. Also, I forgot about this line. This should work, perfect. Thankfully, we also have enough conduits. Uh, I was really worried. But I did bring a super chest so that we can understand what are we going to get. Conduits. Okay. Just one enderman head. Creeper trophy. Nice. I feel there is something wrong. Yep. That's the problem. Things are getting stuck. I don't know where. It's okay. Fixing it is easy. This is why we have that stupid lamp. So first off, the reason that the vacuum hopper was not collecting anything was because of the fans. They were pushing the items away. Secondly, the amount of experience that we're getting is just crazy. Look, I was also under the impression that there are some XP tanks from open blocks, but either they have been disabled or I'm blind. But it is what it is. What can you do? By the way, these are the items that we're getting for the moment. I think you should be able to put looting on the spikes, but for the moment we are very poor, so this is what we get. In addition to that, we get sugar, glowstone and redstone. There is going to be more, I'm sure. We just have to wait. Plant fiber gives you rope. 
Okay, but I am going to wait for more items so that I can fill in the drawers. And in the meantime, I'm going to extend the corridor. And maybe make a structure? Yep, we have a blood moon. I was working on the mob farm and unfortunately, I had to cover it. We have a giant hole back there. But in the meantime, I thought I'm going to use my time productively and start making some Aegon. Ah, the first chest. Oil. I'm also making a bit of diesel. Oh my goodness, that's actually a decent number. Yes, it's daytime. So from here, you would be able to see that I have been working on the mob farm. He caught me from the other side of the river. And I'm going to try and explain to you how everything is working. There are two different types of mob mods in this mod pack. One of them is the infernal mobs. And the other one is the special mobs. We do get infernal mobs on cursed earth, but we do not get special mobs. And that's a bit of a problem. The weird drops that you see over here, like pistons, dispensers, diamonds, slimes, and so on and so forth, are the ones that we're getting from infernal mobs. They are also wearing armor. I'm keeping the gold ones because uh, we can put it inside an arc furnace and get gold. Apparently enchantment is MBT, damage is metadata. So uh, we're matching the metadata because we don't want the damage ones, but we're ignoring the MBT. I should probably do the same thing with the enchanted books, but it does need a Z-Logic controller in order to make the advanced filter. This is also a relatively tall building, so I thought maybe we can have a balcony, a viewing window or something. Anyways, those are not very important. Let me do some building and I'll be right back. As usual, it has been a while later. What else is new in this mod pack? And well, I have been busy building a bit. We do have a very small facade for our mob farm. I also made an internal garden, which is thankfully lit up, so we can stay here over the night. We even have some fences. Since we also had flight, I also worked on the bridge. Uh, those purple blocks that you see over there are anti-blocks. They're cheap. And inside, we're using some bibliocraft labels in order to determine which room is it. Because if you look at the map, you might notice that we have more corridors than rooms. Anyways, using bibliocraft, we also have some paintings for the corridors. This leads to my bedroom obviously, which also has a door so that we can go to the garden. And at the end of the corridor, we have our mob farm up there, as well as our storage drawers and some armor stands. Uh, the reason that they are four is because I had only four pressure plates. And yes, we don't have that many armor. I also made my viewing window, which is not that bad. We can look at the mobs. They are on this side. For some reason, nobody's there. Weird. I also finally realized how the hell would you paint a chair? Uh, you just need to have the carpet. As I have already mentioned in this mod pack, biomes are acting a bit weird. So for example, hello spider, how are you? Hello creeper, how are you? So many stupid stuff. Yes, if they let me talk, I was saying that biomes form differently in this mod pack. This is why you have different types of grass, sand and, you know, weird stuff in a very small patch. Therefore, we're using vivid grass from Botania. It doesn't change color when the biome changes. This is why I'm also using it here, because over here we had like four different biomes. However, all is not good and well. During the last update, there was a change which unfortunately affects us a lot. Silicon. It's no longer called silicon, it's called raw silicon. And it's essentially garbage. What is useful is the silicon solar grade dust, which is incredibly difficult to get because you need like five different machines. Also, I have been mining a lot of clay to get silicon dioxide so that I can electrolyze it in order to get more silicon. But that recipe no longer works. So we're left with like 2000 silicon dioxide, which we cannot even get oxygen out of it. You can still use it, but it's kind of expensive. I need magnesium and I need fluorine. So that is the first item that we have to fix. But in the meanwhile, I have also been busy making dusts. Look at all that stainless steel and electrum. Most of the nice things that I want in this mod pack require vibrant alloy. Making the dust itself is like a huge project, so this is why we have half a million dusts on our hotbar, but that's not the big problem. The big problem is that once you cook it, you get hot vibrant alloy and you need to cool it down using a vacuum freezer. Vacuum freezer requires a workstation, which is an EV tier circuit. EV tier circuits require a clean room and we also need to get more silicon. And since silicon is now a pain to get, we're no longer going to use this kind of silicon because the yield is not great. You only get 16 and each wafer is only going to give you like two items. This phosphorus silicon, on the other hand, it's a teeny tiny bit more expensive, I do admit. But when you cut it, you get the double amount of wafers. And when you engrave it, you get four times the amount of wafers. And that is very important because very soon we have to start making the central processing unit, the wafer. And well, the number that we get matters. You see, with the normal wafer, we get only one. With the higher tier wafer, we get four. So our main job would be to get a better silicon, and that requires a higher heat capacity than our blast furnace can handle. We need to change the coils to cantle. 
and you see, it's on the hotbar. Everything that I have just mentioned to you is our plan for the next two or three episodes, so don't be in a hurry, because I'm actually seriously out of resources. Uh, something that I never thought is going to run out is iron. We have 19 dust, three stacks of screws, two and a half stacks of plates, but that's it. No more ingots. We do have the ores, but it takes time to process it. While everything is being cooked up, one ore is now incredibly important for me, and that is sodalite. Because it does give you the chlorine that you need, it does give you the silicon that you need, as well as sodium. For aluminium, I honestly don't really care. I have already started processing it at a crazy rate, and I can assure you there is no shortage of sodalite in our own base. It's literally in every chest, not that one. Also this one. But as usual, I want more, and I also want iron. One more thing that I'm extremely short on is dirt, uh, for the tree farms. So we're not gonna avoid it anymore. So here is the plan, I'm gonna go mining for sodalite and iron, and I'll meet you right back. It's like the most common things in the game. I hate the ones with the fishing rod, where are you? Show your face, coward. You're not the one. I don't know who was the one. It has been maybe more than an hour later because I bought sticky resin like four times. I did carry the coins with me when I went mining, but I am back at the base and we have started processing everything. If I'm not wrong, I did mine a coal vein. For some reason, I thought salt is also going to be important, so one salt. I don't really know where everything is because I just right-click with the backpacks, but I did manage to hit two more iron veins, tetrahedrite, as well as nickel. I wanted cobaltite. There was also one more vein which I don't really remember. Anywho, this chest is full and I was making more brass. I should have done this manually. Yeah, I'm not gonna wait for another two minutes. We just do this. I just want everything off the list as soon as possible. Let us move on. I'm not really sure how far we can advance today, but if we manage to get the cantle coils, I'll consider that quite an achievement. Cantle is a combination of chrome, aluminium and iron. And unfortunately, we only have three stacks of chrome. I'm not sure if that is going to be enough for two sets of coils or not, but... Um, it's gonna be like that until I get more rubies processed. Which, talking about rubies, uh, where do we find some? Well, that's one stack. Oh, we have more. Yeah, I should have gone to a redstone vein. Actually, talking about that, you can get some rubies from redstone, but I don't think it's gonna be worth it. Redstone gives you obsidian. What? <laughs> yeah, it's really not worth it. It takes three minutes to give you one ruby dust. So imagine if I want to have three stacks of ruby dust, I have to wait for like, I don't know, three hours? Nine hours? There is a spider in my base. How dare you? There is no way in this universe that there is a dark spot here. I guess not. We do have some cantle, but I believe if you want to process it inside a blast furnace... Oh, that is brass. This one is cantle. Oh, it's just oxygen. And yes, I do understand that this one also gives you the hot cantle ingots, but that's not a problem. Because technically, yes, you should put it inside a vacuum freezer, but there is an alternative recipe in a chemical bath. You just need ic 2 coolant, which is uh, one of the super easy things to make. It's just lapis and water. I thought it's going to need nitrogen. Oh, you do work. And each one takes one minute. And we need to spend like four hours on getting it? <laughs> okay. Also, if you guys remember, yep, yeah, a few episodes ago, we did manage to find some mica. I think we should start processing it. Oh, we got a bunch. So how would you get the best yield without using an ore washing plant? Okay, same setup that we have. Macerate, wash, macerate, centrifuge. I have also been processing a ton of resin because we are going to need a ton of rubber. The mica insulator that we have to make, yes, it does require asbestos, but it also requires raw rubber. So I shouldn't convert it into rubber bars. We keep it like this. If you guys remember, the whole reason that we want to get cantle coils is to try and get this type of silicon. So essentially, we need to take care of two processes at the same time. One of them is going to be the silicon solar grade dust, and the other one obviously is cooling down cantle. It does require IC2 coolant, so we are going to need an advanced mixer. It has to be an advanced chemical bath, so that's the two machines that we need. And what do we do with the coolant? I guess for the moment, nothing. We just void it. For silicon itself, we are going to need a few machines. We already have an advanced chemical reactor, so that's good. We would be able to use it in order to mix the raw silicon dust with chlorine so that we get silicon tetrachloride. It doesn't have to be MV, but you know. Then we are going to need another chemical reactor in order to mix it with sodium so that we get silicon solar grade dust. That is what we want. But as a byproduct, it's also going to give us salt. That salt has to be mixed with water so that we will get salt water. 
and the salt water has to be electrolyzed so that we get more chlorine. We also have the electrolyzer, so that's good. I guess we can also mix and match some LV machines. I don't know. Let me see. The issue is that we are not very short on aluminium, but we are short on iron and steel. Because I ran out of iron. You don't consume oxygen. Oh, it's the wrong circuit. Uh, it's something like this? No. We reset you. We put you to zero. No. I want circuit number 11. Yes. So now instead of 60 seconds, it should take 40 seconds or so. But it does require oxygen instead. Yes, 45 seconds. 25% improvement. Okay, I had to craft a few machines, but I made the wrong pipe. Yes, small bronze pipe, not the normal one. This is the fuel line that we have for benzene, and we have some advanced gas turbines. Uh, these are actually amazing because they're way cheaper than combustion generators. And to be honest with you, nitrobenzene, which is the upgraded version of benzene, is actually 60% more efficient than set on boosted diesel. So benzene is just amazing. Are your oxygen? I was wondering why the hell is it in my face? It's kind of stupid to do it like this, but we need water in the mixer and well, having pipes was cheaper than a reservoir. Do you get water? No? Yes, you do. Good. So if I give you lapis dust with circuit number four, you should give me IC2 coolant at a very garbage rate. Oh, and it gets worse. 125 millibuckets. How much do I need for you? Oh, one bucket. This is fun. But we are producing coolant faster than we are making cantle, it's just that we have a backlog, so this should be fine. Oh, cooling it takes longer than cooking it. <laughs> okay, 60 seconds. Okay, now we come to the silicon part. We have our first chemical reactor. Raw silicon chlorine and circuit number two is gonna give us silicon tetrahedrite, correct? That goes inside another chemical reactor. Circuit number one and sodium is gonna give us the silicon that we want. Good. Salt has to go inside the mixer, not you. With water, it's going to give us salt water again. And this is how we are going to recycle the chlorine. That's the whole point. The electrolyzer circuit number 11 should give us our chlorine back. Awesome. It's not awesome, but it's something. Also, there was a filter extractor. Um, I don't know how it used to work. Ah, these ones. Item filter cover. It's not that bad. If it does what I think it's going to do, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, apparently it's a cover and you can export the item that you want, not everything. So for example, here we want salt. I have to remove you. Jerk. Okay, filter for salt. So we should not get silicon. We are getting silicon. Yes, whitelist. It works. Good. Also, ladies and gentlemen, our first eight pieces of cantle. That was one stack of lapis dust. Okay, a few things. Mica is not going to be a problem, we have so much of it, and it's easy to convert. Here is mica-based pulp, which is essentially mica and rubber. That mica-based pulp with asbestos is going to give us mica-based sheet. I know, everything requires 200 steps for processing. Anywho, that one with silicon dioxide inside an alloy smelter, I wish I would have made an MV version, is gonna give us the mica insulator sheet, and that inside the bending machine gives us the mica insulator foil. And we need 12 of that in order to make one cantle coil block, which is not that horrible. The horrible part is the cantle. I think overall it takes me 80 seconds to process one ingot, and I think I have to process like four stacks, so yeah. It's gonna take a lot of time. Oh, it's year four, day four. Okay. See you in year five. Hello. It has been 24 Minecraft days later, and we do have our coils. Don't you worry, we didn't actually run out of cantle. We ran out of something very mundane. Lapis. Because, you know, we have one more stack of cantle and eight more over here. Also, I was not working during the entire 24 days. I, I was mainly AFK. With the new coils, we should be able to get the silicon that we want, and we will get the best yield. So far, then it will be better. However, the part where I was not AFK, I was doing some Thumbcraft research and a lot. Essentially what I was doing is that I was sifting some shards and then I right clicked on one to see the uses and well, I found something of interest. If you put it in some sort of a generator, it gives you 320,000 EU. But wait a minute, it gets much better. The shards from Forbidden Magic, which are easy to farm, give you 720,000 EU. I do admit, enchanted golden apples are very difficult to make, but it gives you 6.4 million. And the best one is nether stars, 100 million. But it's actually something pretty simple to make and the yields are going to be great. Because again, the fuel for it is going to be free. Then there is something else called the Magic Energy Absorber. And it has an EV version, which makes 2000 EU. Again, the recipe is not great. It does require tungsten, but this is a great source. It is true that it's going to need dragon eggs and energized nodes, but this is manageable. 
Anywho, that is something that I'm interested in doing, but first things first, we need to get the EV circuits. But that is something that we are going to do in the next few episodes because it's time to wrap up this one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.